Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about reading documentation. So let's get into it. So the question fresh question was, Hi Frederick, I wanted to say that I love your channel. Thank you. It's really nice and new, uh, to get a new perspective in software engineering life as seen from a senior dev. Oh, that's very high praise, look at that. And it's your, <laughs> it's my podcast of choice when I work. Also, if possible, could you? Uh, can I ask you, as a junior dev, how do I become better at reading code? While writing code is not that difficult, I find it. Re I find reading it quite so. Any good tips? Well, the short answer is that you need to prioritize working on code that you understand. Let me explain that a little bit. So it's this might be something that seems a little bit counterintuitive but I had a talk to this uh, subscriber and examples of what he would like to do is to like read open source projects and go to github and look at source code from different major projects and I, I urge you to not do that uh, not because it's wrong, it's just that it's probably way over your head. So the thing is guys, the easiest way for you to get good at r reading other people's code is for you to understand what they're trying to achieve. So what I like to say is that if, I mean this comes very organically, if you go about it the right way and you have the time, if you actually relax a little bit when you work if, and if you you're a self-taught developer or a, a hobby level programmer or something like that, it, you can join in on a project where you work with some friends or something like that. It's it, the, the thing that I'm trying to get at here is just that you really need to be in a code base where you feel f sort of comfortable because otherwise it's going to be pointless. If you go and try to understand like some of the modules in the Linux kernel and you're not a Die hard system levels developer, it's gonna be way over your head, most likely. It's just, it's not, you're not gonna absorb any information. And that is the first and foremost priority. If you take anything away from my, my little video here today, it should be that thing. The important thing is that you understand what the intention of the code is. So the first thing I like to do, I have three things I always do when I'm going to do a code review or something like that. Number one, always, always look up what the story specification states. That's number one, always. Go to the story card or have some process with your coworker or your or your project uh, buddy or something like that where they list out very specifically the specification of what is supposed to be done you have no idea how often i see developers just dive in and reading the code and then they go say and they say like yeah this is uh, this is good code because what they're looking at is the syntax and how people format their code or some other arbitrary thing and then we ship the thing and then it doesn't work because it's not up to specification the peop the person who implemented it actually did the wrong thing and the person reviewed it didn't take the time to understand what was supposed to happen and couldn't then from the code infer that hey this thing is actually not doing what it's supposed to be doing and then you've both failed both of the developers have failed in this scenario so that's number one you need to take the time to really read through the specification and ask questions if it's unclear, talk to stakeholders, make damn sure that you know what is supposed to happen. Second thing in, second thing is uh, take your time reading. I see, and I did this many times as well. You don't prioritize reading code as much as you should. You think code review. So I get, this is classic. If there is one consistent argument in every single software team I've ever been part of. It is how fast people go get to the code reviews. Nobody wants to do them, ever. It's the one blocker in every single software team. The ready for code review column is almost always full of something and it's almost never anybody who just immediately picks it up even though we promise ourselves we're supposed to do it. So that's like, it, 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 this is not just, uh, 
for like you yourself, you probably have uh, seen it if you've been working for some time. It happens to everybody. Everybody is puts off doing code reviews. And me saying that that's not what you should be doing is not going to change that because unfortunately our sensation of urgency is usually in the favor of writing code as opposed to reading it. But what I want you to to understand is that even though you feel that way, that's fine, everybody does it, but when you actually do read the code, take your time to do so. Because as I said, the one rule is you have to understand what's going on. If you know what the specification is and you can read and really understand what the code is doing, even if that means looking at more than the, the, the diffs. I've seen some developers who just look at the diff and I did that at one point as well when I was stressed and I like just yes, skim through it because I have other important stuff to do. Don't do that. If you really want to improve your ability to read code, you have to understand the context as well. Look at the change and unless that change is immediately clear oh they changed the variable name all right then you don't have to go and check out their branch but if it's doing something more fundamental you might actually have to look at the whole whole file it might be changing a, a big function that's doing something important you need to understand what's, what's going on you don't have to kill yourself over it but it's important that you comprehend the change third and lastly always have the person and this is very hard if the person has left the company always have the person who wrote the code on hand don't be like swallow your pride and ask what they're doing and why they're doing things me and my coworkers we have a very and this this really helps if you have a strong team and a lot of foundation communication in place i have that i think that as uh, when i'm dealing with my team that was the first thing when we formed the team i i took on the the responsibility of uh, administrator administrator and then a few of these things and I told my teammates that the only thing I care about, literally the only care, thing I care about is uh, our communication between each other. How comfortable are we with, you, with each other? And I will go walk through fire for you guys to make you feel as you can talk to, uh, talk to me uh, about everything. Like literally anything. You have a problem at home, you have a... Um, you have a worry, you're concerned about something at work, it doesn't matter, we can always talk. And I prioritize that over absolutely everything. The reason why I, and I told them, and I explained that, the reason why is because when you get to a situation where you see something that I did that doesn't look right, or you're unsure, you don't really know what to do, or you're, you need some help, or you think it's weird because uh, it's you. Know, I might have caused a bug, I don't want you to feel that pinch, that resistance, and everybody, uh, you know what I'm talking about. You're dealing with a person that is either a little bit cold sometimes, or a little bit unfriendly, or something like that, and you don't talk to them because you're just a little bit scared that, of that interaction. And that is the killer of good code, if you ask me. That is the one and first thing that is going to murder good software. So by killing that off, I can enable this third thing to happen when we're w walking through the code. There is no prestige. They feel like you have to feel that it's okay to ask and question. You can do it in many ways. Just be nice about it. Ask, like, I'm not so sure what this code is doing. It seems that it's doing this, but isn't it supposed to be doing that? Be a little bit socially skilled here and always ask if something is unclear. So that that one thing, single thing that I reminded you to remember, that you understand what's going on happens and it doesn't matter if it's a senior or junior developer who is doing this it's that should be the primary focus and as someone who is in this case trying to get better at reading code this is even more important i would say than if you know you feel like you kind of know what's going on so what i want you to take away from this is that i believe that the best thing for you in order to get better at reading other people's code is to number one always prioritize understanding over above all else that is the number one thing and usually i find that it's easier for you to work in a code base that you're sort of familiar with if you go to a bunch of random projects it's it might be harder for you to comprehend what's going on because they might be working in a I mean, that's how it always is. You go to a new project, you're going to have to spend a lot of time to catch up with all the other people who's been working in this code for some time. You can do it, but it might be easier for you to pick a project that is a little bit more closer to home, something more familiar. First thing to always do when you're reviewing code and you're doing any of this stuff, number one, always understand what's going on or the specification first and foremost. If you don't know what the specification is, you don't know if the code is incorrect. It's the number one priority if you to, for you. 
always, always know what the code should be doing. Second thing is take the time to treat this with as much respect as if you're writing code because it's very easy to just skim things and then you're breaking the rule. You're not no you don't know what's going on. And if you don't know what's going on, you might as well just skip the whole thing. Third and lastly, ask questions. Swallow your prestige, swallow your pride, and ask if you don't understand what's going on. And sometimes you might find something that looks weird to you. Don't just say, oh, they probably do what they're do know what they're doing. Just ask a question. I was thinking maybe this would be nice. Like make a small suggestion. And that's why this communication thing is so important. Because if you are in a situation where there's prestige and stuff, it's gonna be hard to do that. So kill that off. Be, f be buddies, like be friends with your team so that it feels comfortable talking to people about practically anything. Have a great day.